Okay. Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about a little bit about some data sources and what uh, metrics or, I guess, graphs and information we can pull from them. The two, the primary objective is to visualize, I guess, package health overall, but more specifically looking at the community aspect, um, how they're maintaining a package. This is Python packages. And we can go um, deeper into versions and other uh, other specific parts of a package. So there's two different ways we can pull data. We can pull data from the actual Python downloads. Now, uh, a little bit recently, you can get, not recently, recently, but um, you can get Python package downloads from a public BigQuery data set, which means this is all free data that anyone can access, and we can get really data about every single download, roughly, for specific packages. So you can extract a lot of here. I'll pull up the slides. You can extract a lot of different data. Um, over here, you can look at this is the schema, and a lot of interesting things you can extract here. If we select the file name, I mean the package name, like say uh, pandas, we can get things like downloads by Python version, and then you can get these cool graphs, or downloads by operating system, which would also be really interesting to see which distributions are being used primarily. Also, which Python versions are being used primarily. I think one of the suggestions was, is a package being only used in one specific Python version, which would be something good to know. A lot of this data could be fed into justifications for advices later on if they seem to be important. Otherwise, just aggregated and displayed on Thoth's search later. Um, but yeah, I was taking a lot of uh, I was taking a lot of, uh, I guess, inspiration from SNCC IO, which allow which takes a lot of data. I'm not sure where, if it takes it from BigQuery, but it uses. Um, package downloads and everything. So you can get like here, you can get like popularity. So right here it's pulling package version, package uh, Python version, and you can see which versions are the most uh, most most popular. I um I found that they query for six weeks past and take averages for weekly downloads. That's how they're querying. One of the big issues with querying is that it's um very compute intensive and we only get a terabyte of computation power for free on BigQuery. So we have to keep that in mind when we're actually making our uh, data set. But yeah, so that's what we can get from BigQuery. We can get a lot of different data. And I think the most important ones are this operating system one, the Python version one, and definitely just the um, versions aggregated out like this. Um, we can also grab from the GitHub database I mean, the GitHub actual GitHub repositories and get things like commit frequency, latest commits, open issues. And uh, also in SNCC.io, they have maintenance. So this is a graph of commit frequency. And you can see sort of get an idea of the health of a, or I guess the um, how well it's being maintained over time, a graph like this. So maybe gathering a little bit more specific data we can see if the health is increasing or decreasing or what the general trend is on the package and we can also look at the community aspect so looking at stars and i guess forks and stuff like that and i thought it would be interesting having outside and inside org ratio so basically looking at the people that are contributing and then seeing if it's they're inside an org outside an org especially for our internal Red Hat projects. Um, or not internal Red Hat projects, but like projects that Red Hat contributes to. Um, yeah, so yeah, th these are the two data sources and there's a lot we can extract. And I thought this was very interesting. We could definitely do stuff with this then. If there's any questions or if people have any ideas of what to also further, I guess, visualize, that would be awesome. This is sort of the schema we're working with in terms of the Python download. So use that as a reference. Thank you.
um, um, two comments or, or questions or something. Um, uh, feels like you, you should uh, coordinate uh, with uh, Dominic because some of the information is also um, aggregated by the um, um, meta information indicators. Um, I think it's it's uh, disjoint uh, sets of information, so you're not not really assembling the same information, uh, from my feeling. But let's see. And um, the other one is uh, maybe you know it or have a feeling for it. If you're browsing the uh, GitHub data, um, are you able to identify from which country the commits came? I think you gave the example of Snake.io advisor. Um, here, I think I've seen country, yes, country code, but that is PyPI information, right? So that is yeah. nothing that is in slide of the uh, GitHub domain, okay? Do, do, do you have a feeling for that? Can I see commits by country? Um, commits by country. I know I can get, I mean, down, I can get, I, I think I can get downloads by country. Like that data is available. I don't know. I don't know if commits by country is available. I mostly looked into the downloads portion of it and sort of just looked surface level yeah. at the GitHub side. Yeah. I I know, I mean, we can get just commits and probably commit types. Depends on exactly what the GitHub API allows us and how deep it allows us to delve into it. Okay, but, I'm gonna take that um, over into the um, tech talk. Um, agenda because um, that was one of the the, the questions that uh, people from Project San Diego had and other people uh, can we really identify where the majority of contributions to a project came from? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's it uh, from my side. Other questions, comments, Pep? A question, yeah. Um... I mean, beyond maybe material for the tech talk as well, but beyond visualizing and um, think this could be eventually used as part of the recommendations, be it maybe prescriptions or or somehow tied to a type of recommendation or something like that. And... Yeah, I definitely think that would be beneficial. The The only thing that sort of needs to be different between recommendations and visualizations is how detailed the data is. That's one of the problems with just visualizing some of the recommendations is that it might, because the recommendations have to be smaller and compact, they don't necessarily give you a full picture because they don't need to. One might just say, oh, this is a popular package, but maybe the user wants to see how popular the package is over time with specific versions. Or specific OSs. So I think a lot of this data that we grab would have to later be, I guess, condensed down into a, a smaller format to be used in a recommendation, or I guess um, not used in a recommendation, but maybe displayed to a user as a justification. Exactly, and, and you're right. Uh, this is something that we already implemented, like Maya worked on aggregating data from BigQuery. This information, like this package, is used very common on Python 3.8 environment, and that's something that is uh, very good for the recommendation engine, because that means that the package is used in that environment, and most probably it might indicate that there is a reason why people use that package in Python 3.8 environments. It can be considered more stable than uh, if there are just few downloads for Python 3.10, right? it might be that the package is not that tested in Python 3.10 environments. I think we have uh, a handler in prescriptions refresh job that aggregates such data for the recommendation engine, and the need, we need to aggregate this data, like run uh, that uh, job and create prescriptions out of them. And, and you were right, like uh, this is like one part how to feed data into the recommendation engine. And then there is that presentation layer uh, that is uh, very, very good for, for people. Like, okay, uh, here is a package. And most use, it is mostly used on Python 3.8, you know, and you can compare it with Python 3.10 and 
or whatever. So yeah, I like it. It's nice. It actually resembles what what our thinking is, right? We we want to formalize all that um, developer experience that we have built up over the years in our brains and our human brains into some kind of machine readable knowledge, also known as prescriptions and advices, justifications. So I also see the the we should mesh it together and see what benefit we can deliver to to a developer. Maybe maybe it's really uh, a little bit unexperienced developers that we can provide with information, or it's really uh, deeper insights um, for the experienced developer where we really can say, hey man, nobody is using that stuff. Why do you do it? Why why do you have the 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 latest version of Python, but not the latest version of whatever package? We see performance uh, impacts. Nobody is using your combination of uh, versions. Think about it. Cool. Uh, thanks, Gage. Any any other questions? Any other comments? Should we call these data-driven decisions? Oh. It's uh, data-driven development. I, I think uh, Francesco and Hema arbeited. Uh, sorry, that was a German word in there. I think uh, Francesco and Hema worked on that one, um, uh, doing some more data-driven, uh, but with a focus on uh, metrics. Uh, I think. This um, this kind of deep data is not what they are looking at. Cool. Uh, thanks everybody for the thoughts. I'm gonna stop the recording and we're gonna switch over to the next demo. Thanks, Gage.